So we're in the uh, welding lab here at Beaver Dam, uh, doing some certification bending, and uh, I just want to show you the difference in molecular structure and some steels and the importance of uh, preparing your specimen properly. This is a Gary Watcher welded this. This is flux core, vertical up uh, with the whole 45, uh, 45 thousandths of flux core. This is a one inch test, this will be a side bend on one inch A36 bar stock. And as you can see, I already ground the valves off. This was no backing on this. Uh, I ground the valves off and prepared the bend side. I'm just gonna go ahead and bend this. job uh, welding it. Uh, you can see the, the bevel in it, the back gouge, but she is completely clear from defects and this is a passing specimen. Um, so we're going to take another specimen that we, we got right next to this one. Uh, we're going to heat it up and we're going to show you what happens when you quench it. So we prepared another specimen. It's right uh, off of this one. Um, Casey's got it ground up and we're going to heat it up. Uh, what we hope to be uh, around 2300 degrees based on color. Um, and then we're going to quench it in 33 degree water and see what happens. So we're ready to uh, heat her up over here. You can see here we got uh, 32 degree, 32 and a half degree water. Uh, it's a slurry snow mix. Uh, we're heating with a rosebud on uh, oxygen acetylene torch. Uh, temperature sensor only goes to a thousand degrees so we're not sure we know when we'll hit over a thousand but uh, honestly we don't know we're gonna have to go off color uh, this is obviously an extreme example uh, of what happens if you quench steel that's uh, too hot already it's over a thousand well different areas of it hovering right about 900 now it's over a thousand we're going to keep going a little hotter just to, just to prove our point as you can see it turns almost white it shows us we're just over 2,000 degrees when it gets that way. And uh, Casey's going to go ahead and quench that now. I'm going to bring her down as far as we can. You can see we brought her down to about 40, 35 degrees, so that's that's pretty cool. We got it right down almost where that water was. Uh, we're just going to clean it up a little bit, uh, just so you can kind of see what we're looking at here. You can see if you bring it in real close, you can see already. Um, how this carbon has already been uh, changed and the molecular structure has been changed. We, we smoothed this out with a uh, grinding wheel flat disc and it was perfectly smooth and now, I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but it's, it's now very porous and, and uh, the molecular structure has really changed. Casey's just going to clean that back up again.
Uh, because this is A36 and it's a mild steel, it doesn't have a ton of carbon in it. What we're hoping to do is get it to a martensitic state. Uh, if we achieve that and, and we have a martensite grain structure, when we go to bend this, uh, you should see very quickly. However, what's interesting, we, uh, we filed it um, earlier and we found out that uh, it's actually not very hard even though it's, it is marked, so go ahead, Casey. And you can see absolutely no ductility to it. Uh, broke as soon as as soon as uh, there's pressure applied. And what's interesting, what you can see on this also, is that there's absolutely no discontinuities in it. You can kind of see the grain structure in there. Hot. It's very hot from grinding still. Uh, but you can see no discontinuities. No reason that it should have broke except grain structure. And so, set that right there. And so we, uh, we did that, obviously that's an extreme example, but we did that to show you, do not quench your certification uh, specimens. Um, I know we heated it up to uh, above what it would have been uh, typically, but still do not heat it. Uh, it does affect the grain structure and it could be a, a reason that you fail at your certification. Uh, now this is our piece that uh, we just put, put through the bend tester, heated, obviously uh, achieved a martensitic grain structure. What we're going to show you now is that because this is an A36 and it is a low carbon steel, it is not, however, hardened as many people think. And we don't have a hardness tester, uh, maybe we'll send this piece up to Fond du Lac, uh, but we do have a file, so uh, we'll, we'll, go ahead Casey. You can see that files away very, very easily. Uh, go ahead and cut a notch right in here. You see that took nothing at all. If that, if this was a, a high carbon uh, hardened steel, um, you would not be able to do that. So that's very, that's a very interesting uh, effect of the A36 low carbon steel.